What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at another printer by VoxLab, this time the Aquila C2. They're a really budget oriented machine. I think if you've invested in VoxLab in any degree, if you already own one of their printers, you were kind of expecting to get a larger scale, maybe even a pro model of a machine. So we were a little surprised to get this lower end model. And I gotta say, I came into this with the utmost skepticism. I didn't know what to expect. I sense I kind of thought that we were getting something else. Uh, I had a lot of questions about this machine. So uh, just like you, I wanted some questions answered. So here's what I did. I took the printer out of the box and I assembled it. The assembly went exactly like an Aquila would or an Ender 3, considering this is aiming at the original Ender 3, the really budget machine. The MSRP of this machine is $160, which is currently what you can get an original Aquila for, the MSRP of which is $180. So if that printer is getting discounted by about $20 or so, $20, $30, and this is going to get discounted about $20, $30, we're looking at one of the cheapest printers around at around $140 or so. dollars. So that makes this compelling and I definitely want to check it out and see what it can provide for that price. So here's what I did. I opened up a, a yellow roll of filament by 3D Max. By the way, check them out in the description. You can get those rolls for $8.99 if you buy them in bulk, which is an amazing deal for filament. So I started printing and I printed the stuff that's on the SD card. I printed the hook. I printed the test. I printed the knob and I printed the toolbox. And all of them came out, well, perfect. Uh, kind of like the original Aquila did. So then I decided to throw in my own files. I took a Benchy using my uh, original Aquila PLA profile, which you can get in the link tree link down below. Uh, and the 3D Benchy printed, well, perfectly again uh even you can even read the hashtag 3d benchy on the back of the benchy which is rare for a lot of machines then i printed this um an articulating print in place excavator uh, i printed this much larger than it's supposed to be i believe it's like 400 percent larger and well uh, just like all the other prints it came out really really well so then I threw in another roll. I threw in a white roll uh, of filament by 3D Max. And since it's Halloween, I printed uh, a couple of these little ghosts um, where you can put an LED underneath to make them glow. Let's see if I can show you that like this. And uh, when you put it over, its eyes glow. It's really cute and uh, makes for a really nice decoration for Halloween time. Uh, this one I printed at 350%. Uh, scale and it was about a 10 hour print and this little guy is a 200% scale uh, and was about a four or so hour print. So I printed all this back to back to back for about three and a half or so days um, and uh, the only problem I ran into was uh, fan noise. Uh, the fan on the hot end actually went bad and this is something that happens on every Aquila. The original, the Aquila X2, and now this one. These fans were never meant to run that long. So if you are going to be interested in one of these printers, I definitely recommend uh, some kind of fan upgrade. I have videos on those. Uh, all of my other Aquilas also suffered the same problem. So I'm not necessarily mad at this one specifically. It just, you know, I guess we all kind of wish that we got a slightly better quality fan. Although at this price range, still really hard to complain about that kind of stuff. I mean, you know what you're getting when you're buying one of the cheapest printers available on the market. So let's talk about uh, the printer itself. Uh, it is uh, pretty loud. It has a 32-bit board. However, it does not have silent steppers, much like the uh, Ender 3 that it is modeled after. But there are some differences from the uh, Ender 3, which I've owned, by the way, for the past five plus years. I still use it. I've gotten rid of other printers, but I held on to the Ender because it prints perfectly every single time. I can, oh, it's so reliable. I've uh, modified it heavily, but then turned it completely back to stock, except for some printable upgrades. And I've kept it like that for ages now. And I know that I can put in filament, hit print, and it prints every time. 
So this has some upgrades over that machine. Uh, let's start with the frame. It looks like uh, they kept the design from the Aquila where the board is. It's kind of mounted higher with the fan on the bottom, whereas on the Ender, the fan was mounted at the top, uh, which caused for some interesting problems with filament getting into the fan, things of that nature. So that was kind of clumsy and strange. So that's improved on this one. They also use a uh, 40 by 40 extrusion to hold the entire bed carriage, which makes it a little bit more sturdy. That's a 2040 on the original Ender, so an improvement there. It also comes with a glass bed, which works extremely well at 65 degrees. It sticks like nothing else and then comes right off when it's nice and cold. Glass, I had to buy myself on the Ender 3. Uh, then it has tensioners on both the X and the Y, which I had to make on the Ender 3. See what I'm getting at? There's, there's definitely some upgrades. Now, the downsides, like I mentioned before, it's loud. It has a lot of fan noise. The steppers are loud, so you can hear the movements of the printer. Uh, and the power supply is not a mean well supply. So this printer is definitely aimed at the real budget level. This is an entry level machine. This is for you to figure out if 3D printing's for you. You don't wanna spend a lot of money. Maybe you've been saving up for a 3D printer because you're a student or you wanna buy this for uh, your kid to experiment with. You're not gonna feel bad if something goes wrong with this machine because it's at the lowest level. Or you really like the chassis, you really like everything else and you have your own motherboard and your own screen. This thing will upgrade really easily and you can turn this machine into many different things. So maybe you really like all of the things that the other printers provide, but you don't have the money yet. You can get in on this machine and slowly upgrade the machine. There's a definitely an upgrade path uh, with something like this, kind of like the original Aquila. I would say at the moment, if you if it is selling at MSRP and you do not get this machine on sale, I would try to look for an Aquila because this does come with an H32 chip. It's a 32-bit board, unlike the 8 in the Ender, uh, but it is an H32 and we know the firmware currently for the H32s is being worked on, but it's not readily available yet. So. If you're going to buy uh, an Aquila at all, whether it's original, X2, or this, you're likely going to get an H32 chip. So if that's something that you don't want uh, to be a part of, you can easily get a Creality board, an SKR board, it would fit right in. And actually I tested the screen uh, while I was assembling this printer, and the screen is completely interchangeable with the original Ender, so I know the upgrades for the boards are going to be the same. So that's worth mentioning. Uh, they say that this is a DIY machine, and I think it really is. And as far as the rest of the chassis goes, something interesting I noticed, uh, the extrusions on this machine are machined better than many others uh, that I've recently been dealing with. Uh, most of the time, it almost looks like a drill press has been used, but these extrusions are machined. The spots where you put in the hardware are all perfect. There's no sharp edges. It's actually really nice. So the platform itself is great. So if you can get this machine, at 140, somewhere around there, $140 for a 3D printer that prints like this out of the box. I think uh, I think I finally understand what this machine is for. Ever since I heard that this was coming out, I definitely had some level of confusion about it. Why didn't they make the Pro? Why didn't they make a larger scale printer? Why is this what they focused on? And I think after having it and experimenting with it and printing with it, I think I understand. The way that I was looking uh, personally at it was from a person that has experience in 3D printing, that has other machines, that knows what they want in a 3D printer. Whereas if I was coming at it from the five or six year ago uh, Fetter that was looking for a 3D printer because now they're affordable when I bought that uh, first Ender 3, yeah, I, I could have easily gotten myself into one of these, printed with it, upgraded with it, just like I did with that one, except with a little bit uh, more money in my pocket because it's still cheaper than the original Ender. Now you can get the original Ender on sale as well, uh, especially if you buy it from overseas and wait for it to ship, something like Alibaba or AliExpress, one of those sites. But I have a feeling this will be around there as well. Um, and you know, more of these printers isn't necessarily bad. Obviously just copies upon copies upon copies get old, they get frustrating, nothing new is being created. But at the same time, it's more choices for us. 
And uh, if I'm getting into the hobby and I have a very limited budget, instead of having two or three printers to choose from, I have four or five. Uh, if you look at it that way, it doesn't seem so bad, does it? Now, there's another really inexpensive printer that I also have experience with, the Anet ET4. I found it really inexpensively, close to $100 uh, on Amazon. But I have experience with that machine and it is also loud, has really cheap components on it, the cheapest of the cheap. And uh, I would definitely recommend this machine over, over that one personally. I even just got rid of the ET5 uh, machine because it just it has some shortcomings. Um, and is not built as stout as it might look. Whereas this uh, is a pretty decent package for a really, really inexpensive printer. So buyer beware, H32 chip, really inexpensive, still suffers from some of the same issues the original Aquila did, such as the fans, the fan noise, the plastic extruder, things of that nature. But if you know these issues and you're coming into the machine at such a low budget, that's, that's this printer's pocket. And uh, you know, the, it prints so well, um, right out of the box at least. I'm not sure how long it's going to print like this. I'm sure things will start to deteriorate with time just like they do on all 3D printers. But at that point, it's the same thing as getting an Ender or the same thing as getting an Aquila X2. They're all gonna run into very similar issues as time goes on. Uh, it's typically fan, uh, PTFE fittings, uh, the plastic extruder. Those are the things that like to uh, go wrong and cause some really annoying problems still has the same hot end so yeah now you know my personal opinion on it and let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see with this machine do you want to see the motherboard do you want me to start taking things apart do you want to know more about the power supply basically i took this out of the box i printed with it and now i'm showcasing what it did and my opinion on it and just my impressions but if you guys want to see more let me know in the comments and uh Maybe we'll make more content on this machine or maybe we'll do something else with it. I don't know. All right. I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to check out our Discord. You can get the link in the description below. Lots of like-minded people. Share your prints. Troubleshoot your printers down there. Also, I started a Patreon, uh, which I'm still working out. Uh, but check that out if you guys want to support me and support the channel directly. Patreon is a great way to do it. There's some benefits for you there as well. All right, as always, I'll see you down in the comments. Later.